That's a very important question, and that is actually the basis for some of the work that, um, that we've been involved with. And I think uh, it's a key uh, problem, if you will, in, uh, in clinical cancer pharmacology. Um, I think the primary site for, um, for cancer drugs to undergo metabolism is the liver, as it is for drugs in any other therapeutic class. Um, now, as to whether or not this is a good thing or a bad thing, that can go either way, depending on whether uh, any, any um, biotransformation products that are being formed in uh, organs of uh, elimination are either as active or even more active than the parent molecule are, um, or are alternatively inactivating uh, drugs, which is usually the more common mechanism. We do know of certain drugs that are um, intentionally being administered to patients in an inactive form and require to be bioactivated through metabolism. Um, that's a, that's a, an uncommon scenario, though. For in most cases, drugs undergo metabolism and then subsequently lose efficacy. And so the, the rate and the extent to which un uh, drugs undergo metabolism certainly can influence uh, responsiveness. Um, we, we know, um, we like to think as clinical pharmacologists that uh, drug concentration um, in, this, in this systemic circulation is a surrogate for levels that can be achieved in a tumor. And it, it follows logically that um, uh, an excessive extent of metabolism reduces uh, concentrations of an active ingredient of a therapy and thereby can lose effectiveness. Um, this is um, an issue that is, um, that, that is um, that shows a high degree of intra-individual variation. Um, we, we, we are studying um, the causes for this intra-individual variation and um, there's a number of approaches available to, to determine um, uh, one's metabolic state uh, and as such uh, perhaps uh, target um, a drug dose that would be more or less appropriate for an individual patient.